from Classic Game Room. Of course, you already know that. What you don't know is that like two weeks ago, I, w I wasn't even here. I was in Seattle, Washington. I went there on vacation. I went to Seattle for a week, checked out the sites. Of course, you wouldn't know that because here on CGR Undertow, we had videos up every day while I was gone. That's how, that's how, that's how hard I work for you little ingrates. That even when I'm not here, I'm still here. I don't, I, even I don't know how it works. One of the coolest things I did in Seattle, and the reason I'm doing this video, I went to a really neat place called the EMP. I don't even remember what it stands for. It's like Electronics Music Pop Culture Museum. The EMP Museum. It's almost like they knew I was coming because they had a Chuck Jones exhibit. Now, if you've watched this channel, you know that I am basically just a human cartoon character, only I am real. I am, I'm flesh and blood like we. So, I was very excited to see this Chuck Jones exhibit. Chuck Jones is one of my favorite animators. Looney Tunes, obviously, one of my favorite cartoons ever. And after I enjoyed the EMP Museum and all the Chuck Jones stuff, which was awesome, I actually bought these, and this is what I wanted to share with you guys today. These are desktop duos, Looney Tunes edition. And these are really cool. And I'm doing a video on them. Uh, they each came with two figures, Tweety and Sylvester, Bugs and Daffy, and then each box also came with one of these. Check this out. These little books that have like different like stills from various cartoons over the years and some over the years and some dialogue from all the great Bugs and Daffy shorts over the years. This is real this is great. This is kind of like I mean I'm not like a scrapbook guy, but if I were, my childhood scrapbook would look a lot like this. Tweety and Sylvester book is pretty cool too. That's the thing about the Looney Tunes, you know? Like, there, there's the cast of characters was just vast. But the cool thing was like, all these different characters had different chemistry together, you know what I mean? Not that they're real people, but that, you know, certain characters, the way their personalities were, the way they, you know, people wrote, the different guys wrote them, you know, they worked better together than with other characters. Like Bugs and Daffy, one of the great duos in Looney Tunes. And uh, of course, Sylvester and Tweety. So it's cool to see them paired together like this. And I'd like to see more. Uh, I just, I don't know if there are more. So if you guys know uh, if this company did like more of these duos, this was the only two they had at, at the EMP Museum, the gift shop, hey. Um, if they had more, I would have I would have purchased them, but unfortunately this was it. But I still want to share them with you guys because they're really cool. You can do Daffy. You can actually create your own Daffy Duck cartoons. It's kind of like Color Forms. Join the revolution in the comments. Only not quite as awesome as Color Forms. These are just regular toys. Color Forms are regular toys plus Color Forms, and that's what really makes them so special. Also, you can kind of look at this. You can store. You can make Daffy, wacky Daffy from the older cartoons. You go. Woo, woo, woo. I mean, he's jumping through the water and stuff. That was my favorite Daffy. Daffy later on became a very resentful kind of jerk. And he that Daffy was funny too. But I like Wacky Daffy from like, you know, from the early shorts. Anyway, that's enough ranting. Let's let's actually take a look at the toys. They're pretty well made. Like I said, very they're very, very pliable. You know, it's like the old like Gumby toys. How they, they were like uh, rubber on the outside, but then wire on the inside, so you could bend them around. You can make it. You can make bugs turn his head. Look at this. This is amazing. This is. I'm so glad that I found these because these are also going to go on my CGR Undertow work desk toy shelf. I mean, I, it's kind of a shame that I didn't have Looney Tunes up there already. But I would have, but I didn't know they existed. I blame you guys for that. But here's one of the, if I have a complaint about these toys, it's that the scale is a little, little messed up. Like here's Bugs and Daffy, and then, and then there's Sylvester and Tweety. So the scale is a little wrong. These, these, these are too big. Like it should be more like, there, let me let's create the optical illusion. You know what I mean? Like this is, this is what the scale should be, but instead it's like this. So I don't know what, I don't know what went wrong. I don't know if maybe this was like, meant to be a, maybe it's part of a different line, or, I don't know, maybe maybe someone fell asleep at the switch, but things like scale bother me, because now when I have these standing up, I've gotta have, you know, like that illusion. I have to have Bugs and Daffy way out in front to create the illusion of, to, to, to lie. The Looney Tunes were so far ahead of their time. I remember, like, I grew up watching them in the late 80s when I was a little kid, and in the early 90s, because Nickelodeon would run uh, the short Saturday morning, and then there was the Bugs Bunny and Tweety show, that, uh, here they are, Bugs Bunny and Tweety. This is it, hit the lights. You know, and they would rerun all these all these really old Looney Tunes shorts. And as a kid, I had no idea that these cartoons were like, like 40 and 50 years old at the time. Even then, I had no idea. I mean, that's just how well they, they stood the test of time and, and how funny they were to me, even though they were written in a generation well before me. Um, it's just how, it's how good those guys were. That's what I think about the Chuck Jones exhibit. You go there and, 
you just see all the, the work that went into the Looney Tunes and you see a lot of his storyboards and sketches and stuff. The guy was just phenomenal. He was he was an incredible cartoonist. And I wish, I wish you know, there are a lot of good cartoons today and everything. I don't want to sound, I know I'm always complaining about, I sound like an old man on his porch complaining about the youth. But the problem with like cartoons today is everything's so flat. And one of the reasons these toys work so well is that these characters had dimension originally. When they were drawn, you know, they were drawn uh, sort of with depth and they were drawn like 3D characters on a flat surface as opposed to flat characters. You know, a lot of modern animation is really flat. But anyway, these are great. They're gonna go on my toy shelf now. I'm trying to think of what else I need on my toy shelf, uh, if, if I could find any. I don't know, I, I doubt there are any private snafu toys. Oh, you know what I need is an Aqu I need some Aqua Teen Hunger Force toys. I don't have any of those. That's one of the modern cartoons I like. I actually like a lot of Adult Swim cartoons, which is gonna sound hypocritical because I just ranted about flat animation. But the point is the writing is really strong. See, that's what I've done. I, I've lowered my standards for it when it comes to modern cartoons. The, you know, the, the animation and the drawings don't even need to be great anymore. As long as the writing's good, I'll watch it. But, you know, back in the day, not only was the writing fantastic, it transcended generations, and the, the drawings were funny. Come on, cartoons, let's get back to when the, the actual drawings themselves and the poses and the, 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 the facial expressions, when all this was actually funny. And it all worked together. It wasn't just, I'm writing a sitcom and here are some flat, ugly 2D characters. Adult Swim, I'm looking at you on that one. Although I really like the backgrounds in Squidbillies. They're beautiful. So, look, I just like cartoons. And I like to bitch, so I bitch about cartoons. But anyway, if you can find these and you like Looney Tunes, these are definitely worth having. I mean, they're Looney Tunes toys. I don't know. I don't know. Why, why wouldn't they be worth having? What did you expect me to say? Did you really expect me to have a toy like this in my possession and say, Nope, I'll pass on it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not an idiot. I'm curious to know, what are some of your favorite Looney Tunes shorts and, and cartoons? Do you have any? Let me know in the comments. I'd, I'd be curious to know. And actually, who's your favorite Looney Tunes animator? That's another one of the cool things about the Looney Tunes. Every different guy uh, had his own directing style, and he would write the characters uh, and draw them a little bit different than the next guy. So Bugs had a different personality if Chuck Jones was doing them rather than, say, Bob Clampett. Who, by the way, was like, I think, my favorite when it came to the actual animation. Bob Clampett was just, he was on a whole different level. Chuck Jones was great, too. But now, at this point, we're comparing, like, an 11 with a 10.9. These guys are just the greatest ever. They're the Looney Tunes! Mega Mini Kits! Desktop Duo. Best Enemies. And I reviewed them. And I'm back from Seattle, guys. I'm back. To fight the evil. Actually, I probably am the evil that I'd be fighting. I'm kind of a lot like Daffy Duck. Kind of insane. Kind of a jerk. But a classic, nonetheless.